Sounding over there. Cool, cool. Um, in reality, after listening to Pastor Zine this morning, I could actually go home because a fair bit of what you spoke on I've got this morning, and we haven't spoken all week, so except for that other subject we spoke about. So um, I'll try and be brief. That in itself is a miracle, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, I, uh, I was I was listening to the the song that my wife was playing, and uh, there was two lines in there that really got me. And one was "Rid me, rid me of me, rid me of myself. I belong to you, Abba Father, and lead me to your cross, lead me to your heart, Father God. You first today, Lord, in all things, Father God." Forgive our sin and Father help our unbelief in Yeshua's name. Amen. Well, as I said, ah, there it is. As I said, um, a lot of what Pastor Zine spoke this morning I've got here, but I'm, I'm going to go through it because I believe it's important. A little bit, little bit um, encouraging, a little bit tough, a little bit of a teaching time. So I want to talk today about who we are. I want to talk about who we are together. And Pastor Zine talked about us as individuals and us being the body of Christ. Uh, we are the bride of Christ. He's coming back for his bride and we are the body. I want to talk about our salvation. And I want to talk about what that really means. You see, being a member of his body here on earth, it's not easy. I, I, I don't want to frighten anyone, but it's not easy. It's not a cakewalk. It's not um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yippee! Because we're in a battlefield. And the battlefield we're in, when you're in battle, there's usually two sides. There's one, the good guys, which is us, and you've got the other side, which is the, the evil side, the demonic, which is that. We're surrounded by those who would hate us because we choose to live under the shadow of the Most High hidden away in his protection and very much getting up each day and putting on the armour of God. Yeshua says, put on my armour. And I believe that's a daily thing. Okay? And I don't believe most people do it. And I haven't. But this has really come to me. So, a little bit this morning also is a little bit of a warning. I want people that come to the Father to know why they're there. And Pastor Zane mentioned that. She talked about why we're here. So first of all, I want to tell you why I'm going to say that. So if you want to turn to your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 1 through 12. I'm not going to read it all, but I'll read a little bit of it. Um, and it says what one, of our, excuse me, what one of our functions is as members of the body, as members of the bride, because he's coming back for a clean, spotless bride. Bless you, someone's meant. So in Ezekiel 33, verse 1, the word of Adonai, which is Abba Father, means master, came to me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people. Okay, well, here in Australia, we are all each other's people. We're Australians. I don't care what you look like, you are Australian. If you live here, you're an Aussie. So I'm speaking to you. Not that you're my children, but I am one of your people. And I say to you, when I bring this, when Abba brings the sword on the land, troubles and dramas, suppose the people of the land take a man from among them and set him as their watchman. We're all watchmen, really. All of us that say Yeshua is Lord, we are watchmen. I am one of your watchmen. I will warn you what's coming. I'll tell you why. If when he sees the sword coming upon the land and he blows the shofar and warns the people, now back in the days of Israel, they had a horn, those goats, horny do that thing, it's hollowed out, and they blew it. I have tried to do that, and it frightened all my grandchildren away. 
Um, so there's a real talent in playing the chauffeur. But the idea here is that the watchman, his or her job is to watch. It's to sit and look at what's coming. It's to sit, interpret the scriptures, if you will. It's to, it's to find out what's happening. And then whoever hears the sound of the chauffeur, but ignores the warning. So if people hear the word, they hear the message, they hear Yeshua, they hear all of these things, and you choose to ignore it, that's fine, that's your choice. It's not fine, I don't want that to anyone, but it's, that's your choice. If the sword comes, in other words, troubles, dramas, etc., and take you away, your blood will be on your own head. When we are all going to be judged, and we will be judged, we'll be standing before a Holy Father who will judge us. He is a Holy Judge. He can't do anything else because he can't lie. And if we say to him, I didn't know about you, I didn't, I didn't see you, I didn't, no one told me, he's going to say, well, hang on, you did. He sat and watched the, the, the um, what's this thing called? Facebook um, thing, and you heard about me, and you did nothing. So you, you have been told. Okay. Um, he that heard the sound of the chauffeur and ignored the warning, his blood will be on himself. However, if he had taken the warning, so if you listen to what's said here, every every time someone is speaking, if you listen to what's being said, okay, you'd save your soul. But if the watchman sees the sword, in other words, if I don't come along and tell you, or whoever's speaking, wherever, doesn't come along and tell you, and we don't blow the shofar, we don't warn you, you will be taken away in sin, but your blood will be required at my hands if I don't tell you the message. So that's that's the the, um, the guts of that. What I wanted to continue on with was was now and the title of my message, of course, is "Lock Your Feet to the Ground." In other words, be determined. Don't be moved. Okay. Do not be moved. Okay. Um, if you'd like to go to Ephesians chapter six, verses fifteen on. I'll just read another scripture and then I'll lead into this with the rest of my message. And this is how we tell, this is how we walk, and this is putting on the armour. And your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So we are here to preach peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, one shield, which with which you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, now, body of Christ out there, listen, you pick up the faith, the shield of faith, with your faith, you can hold off everything. This is what he says. Take the helmet of salvation, helmet, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, so I left mine over there, Bible, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching to this very thing with all perseverance and supplication to the saints. Okay, now I can get on with it. Lock your feet to the ground. There's a buzz in church circles today on the upcoming antivirus injections and all the demonic activity behind it, and it's there. It'll, it'll try and tell you it's not, but it is. And there are those almost wringing their hands in agony over this issue. Should we be surprised? Not at all. Should we be frightened? Not one bit. Why shouldn't we be frightened? Isaiah 41.10 tells us. Abba Father says, do not fear. He didn't say, think about it. He said, do not fear. I am with you. Now, in the word that my Bible, that I am, am, is in italics. In other words, I'm there. He is here. We're two or more gathered together in my name. I am there with you. So I'm with you. Be not dismayed. There's no reason for us to walk around with a face, you know, as long as a horse. For I am your God. I will make you strong. So not only is he sharing this relationship with us where we've got father and son, father and daughter, but he's also making us strong. We put on all of this stuff and this is what we end up looking like. That's pretty scary. Now, I was trained in law enforcement many years ago and we were trained in right control. And one of those things was we had... 30 guys all in a row, I won't tell you how it's done because I'm not going to give away secrets, but if you tried to knock over those 30 guys, you, you really had a big job ahead of you, okay? But if it was one guy or one person there in battle array, you've got nothing. 
I will make you strong, he says, I will help you. So you don't have to do it on your own. You don't have to share this gig on our own. You don't have to labour through this thing on our own. I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness, he says. And that's a big arm, not mine, his. Behold, all those who are angered against you shall be ashamed and confounded. So those that are trying, you know, to, 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 to have a go at us, they shall be as nothing. Now this is really exciting. And those who fight with you shall perish. Now, okay, he's talking to the Israelites in those days, and there was a big punch-up going on between a few different of the ites. I call them the ites group. I can never pronounce them all. But this is who he is to us today. All scripture from the whole lot, from Genesis to Revelation, is good for reproof, instruction, and correction. Every single bit of it. There is not one bit that is not useful to us today. We don't need to be afraid today. We can lock our feet to the ground because we have a family so unimaginably resistant and that's the body of Christ. Pastor Zeno, you were talking about that before, all of us together. Who is it? Tough. It's a strong thing. We have authority so deep to call on, and yet in a lot of cases we don't. You'll get some emails, no doubt, Pastor. We seem to get caught up with watching what's happening, yet forgetting we are the ones who can resist all the demonic activity because he said we could. Now, I understand authority. I went through training many years ago. And at the end of it, I got to raise my right hand and I said, I do, without fear, ill will or favour, swear to uphold the laws of the Commonwealth, blah, blah, blah. And at the end of it, I was author authorised. I was an authorised officer. I had my little badge in my pocket and all my little toys, and I could go and do my job. Okay? And it's the same with Yeshua. When you say yes to him, you are authorised. You've got a train though, you need to start walk out. Well, maybe you can, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? So, uh, once we've done that, and in John 14, verse 12, um, we, we talk about locking our feet to the ground, we talk about trusting Him. He says, Amen and Amen, I tell you, he who puts his trust in me, you want to know what you can do with your authority? He who puts his, his trust in me, the works that I do, he will do. This is Jesus talking to his disciples, which is to us. We are his disciples. I'm Mark. I'll be the second one. That's not. <laughs> and greater than these he will do, because I'm going to the Father. I want you to think about this, locking your feet to the ground in battle, because this is what this is. Our battle is prayer, our battle is supplication, our battle is being together um, as one, our battle is, is coming together, our battle is all of these things, this is how we battle. We battle with prayer, we battle with our, getting on our knees and pray, okay, but I want to tell you something. And whatever you ask in my name that I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in my Son, in the Son, sorry, John 14, 14, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. I wish you had to put under that if you've really got the faith. But we already know. He who puts his trust in me, he who puts his faith in me, he who puts his belief in me, he who puts his life in me, I believe you could add that up to the cows come home. Now, the miracles of Yeshua, you want to know what, what we should be doing today? And I'm equally as ashamed of myself, actually. So it's a little bit of a mark standing in the mirror, having a shave, again thinking, oh, and you guys watching. Miracle 1, healing the possessed man in Capernaum. Mark 1, 21, 28. Healing of Peter's mother-in-law. And he got fed. Well, I would have healed her too. In my mother-in-law's place, she couldn't cook. All done. Cleansing of the leper, Matthew 8, 1, 4. Turning water into wine. That's a good one. Isn't that a good one? Yeah. Nice Grenache, please have a photo. The miraculous catch of the fish. Put your net on that side, not on this side. All the fish are on that side. Really? Yeah, really. They couldn't get him in. Healed the paralytic. Cured of the man with a withered hand. His hand was all whooped and walked all and, and he did that on a Saturday. That was hilarious. Healing of the official son in Capernaum. Healing of the centurion's servant. He didn't even have to go to the house. The centurion said, you don't have to come. I believe in you right here and right now. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to 
turn up, you don't have to hoop and holler, all you've got to do is speak. Raise the widow's son at Nay. At I mean, get this. They were, he was in the coffin, or in the burial array, and they're walking out with him and everyone's crying and they're all opening a vein and they're all unhappy. And Yeshua walked up and he touched the coffin and the guy got up and started speaking. He calmed the calming of the storm at the sea, Mark 8, 23, Matthew 8, 23, sorry, Mark 4, 35, in the anointed version. What the word says there, it says that the disciples were going, oh my goodness, they're really ready to throw themselves over the side. They're, they're panicked. And they went up to Yeshua. He was having a sleep in the front of the boat. Have we ever slept in front of the boat while the problems are going on? We usually sit there and go, no, 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 you know, come on. You know, we've really got to get on with this. They ran up and, they, and, and they're all panicked. And, and, and he looked up and he said, peace be still. And the word declares it wasn't calm. It was a great calm. It was 15 foot waves and then flat as a pack. I used to be in the air sea rescue years ago. And I can tell you now, going out over Tweed Bar, it used to be entertaining. We've buried the transom of Burr Cruiser 1 a few times, you know, 40 years ago. It was scary. But to see it go from that to dead flat, wow. And that's what he did. Curing of the, of the, of the demon at, uh, at Gerasene on the island. He goes for a holiday, right? He's booked in. And here's the guy, he's gone nuts and he's blah, blah. If you read that story in the Hebrew translation, it actually says he gave the demons permission to go into the pigs. There's 2,000 pigs, there's 5,000 demons. How do I know that? Legion. I'm, you know, Legion is a Roman legion. He gave them permission. Get this, guys. Come on. Is I the only one that's got it? He, he gave the opposition permission to go into the demons. Healed the paralytic in Jerusalem, cured a woman afflicted with, with, with the, an issue of blood, raised Jairus' daughter, healed two blind men in Nazareth, healed the possessed mute, fed, fed 5,000. Wouldn't you like that grocery bill instead of having to duck off to the, to the supermarket every week? I mean, you imagine it. A little fella he turns up with his lunch. It's his lunch. He could have said, what's mine, God, not yours. And, and Abba just kept breaking it. It just kept producing. It just kept producing. It didn't stop. Walked on water. If you, we were sitting in the shack, haven't we? We were all sitting in the shack with, with Yeshua and what's his name having a race on the lake. I've got to admit, so I'd like to do that. Healings at Genesaret, cured of the Syrophoenician's daughter, healed the deaf mute, fed another 4,000. You've got to remember that the Bible says 4,000 men, 5,000 men. It's actually another one of 7,000, I believe, somewhere. That didn't include the wives, the kids, the cats, and the dogs. So, how many? Restore sight to the blind man. Healing of a man born blind, cast out a dumb demon. So, there's a guy that was uh, deaf mute, I believe he said he was, and um, healed that uh, by rubbing it. Uh, no, that was the blind guy, rubbed it, mud on his eyes. Um, the disciples there said, why couldn't we do it? He said, this, this type of demon, listen to this, this type of demon requires prayer and fasting. So it's good, I feel apparently. Healing a possessed crippled woman, healing of a man with dropsy, cleansing of ten lepers. That's a tenfer, isn't it? It's ten of you. If you go and show yourself to the priest, don't tell anyone. You see, that was too. I ever said that a lot. Sorry, I'm sure I said that a lot. He said, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. I'm not here for me. I'm here because I'm serving the Father. This is God the Son, but He's there serving the Father. So, um, healing the blind at Jericho, healing of the servants here during the arrest. So they turned up after hours, after dark, to arrest him, which was illegal in Jewish law. Peter took his sword and knocked off an ear. Yeshua picked it up and went back again. They all saw this, and yet they still arrested him. The raising of Lazarus and the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper was the best one. Could you, could all of us, could anyone in this room or anyone out there listening, could we sit and have lunch with someone that we knew was going to drop us in it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Now I know there's heaps of us 
people out there who have prayed for stuff over the years and we haven't seen an answer for it. I'm guilty of this. And I sat there yesterday and I was thinking, Father, what, why is that? We pray for things? Sometimes it just, he says, you pray amiss. You ask and do not you receive because you ask for the wrong motive. Okay, why am I asking for these things? In uh, James 4.4, 4, he says, You adulterers and adulteresses, don't you know that your friendship with the world is enmity of God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Oh, there's another one. Now, that adulterers and adulteresses, it doesn't mean literally just that. It also means one who is faithless towards God and ungodly in the Hebrew. So what do we do about this? Well, we have a determination. We lock our feet to the ground and we say no. And we get together and we put our shields together and we lock our feet to the ground and we create this shield wall. Okay, as all of the, all of the, the Greeks did, the, uh, the Romans did. What do we think of life today? What do we really want? Is it life ever after? Thank you, Patch. Is it life ever after? What do you want? Do you want this world or do you want the next world? If you want this world, then, I'm oh, sorry, it's got an ending and you're not going to enjoy it. If you want the life ever after, it's great. Um, it's going to be great because we get to hear those awesome words, enter thou with the joy of the Lord. Well done, son and daughter. Well done. You've, you've run the race, you've finished it. If it's life you want today and every day until he returns, there's a key. Lay down your life. If you sit and want what you want, you do what you want, and you don't have relationship, friendship with our Father, you're in trouble. Is it easy? No. Because it's part of our human conditioning. It's so deep that the desire for acceptance in a crowd or be special is almost overwhelming sometimes with a lot of people. And I mean, two hours each. And they had some big numbers. They were all together the same. And they would all move, move, until they got there and then the, the fight was on. They would interlock with each other um, and that's how it is. But that's how it is with us. We come together and we stay walking together. He says, seek me first and I will add everything to your life. And that's what we come together for, to seek him first. What do you want in our life, though? We need to concentrate on our side of the relationship. We need to make sure that we're in that place with him, that holy place, on our knees. One of the songs this morning that, that my wife played was, was Bring Me To My Knees. How many times do we get on our knees in life without God? Forget, forget you've got God, no, just generally. How many times are you on your knees? If it's anything like me at home, it's when, have you ever noticed you're sitting on the couch and you're eating chips and you drop a chip? The lightest thing ever made and it goes three feet under the lounge. Now I'm an engineer, and I look at that and I go, it's impossible, but it does. Okay. When do you get on your knees? For us as Christians, it should be, and it is. When you, I, I do it when I'm at home on my own, because it's, I'm in front of something majestically royal. He's my father, he's my king, He's my trainer, he's, he's everything. Lock your feet in and don't be moved. I was taught very early in my faith that if I fell into sin, and you do, confess it early, get on with growing. A lot of people, and I was guilty of this too, when I did that, I was on my own, and I wandered around for weeks. I never say anything, say anything because being male, we don't say much. Confess it, get on with it, don't sit under the weight of it. It's been forgiven. Okay, Abba Father promises us, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, therefore be zealous and repent. It's him, that's him in Revelation 3.19. He's telling us, get on with it, guys. Repent. Okay, you, 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 you broke this, but this is what happens. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our sins from us, it's gone. Okay? 
this is one of the many scriptures which talk about our sin after salvation. So we have to, when we come to him new and afresh, lock your feet to the ground, say, yep, well, I may have lost him and these a few times here. However, I'm not going to do it on purpose, and he knows I am imperfect. And there's a time between when we say yes to him and the time we get to there, which will be when he's judging us. I'm pretty confident of that. He loves us and he will rebuke us. He's like a dad. He's dad. The only thing the enemy can do while you've got your feet locked to the ground is he can remind you of your past life. Oh, well, you did this. When this happens, lock your feet to the ground. Don't accept the voice of the enemy. I don't accept delivery. It's not yours. Okay? And I don't want it. So don't be sweating about sin. Lock your feet to the ground. 1 John 1 sin. 1 John 1 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. But listen, in 1 8 it says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth isn't in us. So of course we sin. We are sin. We've been, we've been sin. But when we say yes to him, we are cleaned. If we confess our sins in 1 John 1 9, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 10, if we say we haven't sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. That means we are devoid of the walk that we say we're having. When you start faith with the King of all, you must be very convicted this is what you want. Because it's a lifestyle. It's a lifelong lifestyle change. We go from being selfish, self-centered people to the other spectrum. He can, now listen, be warned. Here's, that's why I read uh, Ezekiel 33 to you guys. And I have to tell you that when my wife and I first got saved, a guy came up to me one day, came up to us from Canada. Was not that a guy from Canada? A guy came to preach from Canada, didn't ask from, we just pulled up in the car park. I still smoke. I've only been saved a short time, so I'm in the car park with the Benson and Edges. And he came over and he talked to us and he said, I believe you've got a, this guy just landed from Canada. He said, you've got a, you've got a, uh, a thing on, on your life for being a watchman. It's something good. And I've proven it a couple of times over the years, haven't we? You know, we've, we've proven that to be right. So if all of you are watching now and if you don't like what I'm saying, I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Now, this is why I'm saying this to you. He can see into your heart. He can see into us. If we think we're sitting there quietly saying nothing to anybody, but we've got our own thoughts about like this, about like that, this sucks, that, whatever. He can see that. He knows that. He's looking at our motives. Are we locking our feet to the ground, hanging out with other members of the body who can encourage us and be encouraged by us? If we put anything on earth before him, he will know. And there'll be a price to pay. Be assured of that. Luke 12, 20 says, but God said to him, Fool, this night your soul shall be required of you, then those who shall be those things which you have prepared. For where your treasure is, in Luke 12, 34, there your heart is in the soul. Make sure your heart is sitting for the Father. If you're doing it just in case, then your motive's not right. Think about this thing again. It's a big commitment. Lock your feet to the ground. Become immovable when it comes to your next life. We all have a part to play in this family here and relationship with the King of Kings and royalty. If you want to get into this life with us, saved, find your way to heaven with us and others, as many good churches around this country, admit. And, and confession is always the toughest. You know, you get pulled up by the police at speed. You've got to confess. Most Aussies, no, I wasn't doing that. You know, we do. We say, oh, no, I didn't do that. In other words, we're saying, you're all I'm not. You can't do that with the Father. His love is so deep because he is love. He's the source of love. He knows, he knows who you are. He's got your number. Admit, yeah, I'm at fault. This life I'm living, Father, is really not that good. I believe in you. And you know what? When we came to him, I can't say I believed in him totally as Father. I believed in him as God. I've never doubted that for a second. But he and I had to work with each other 
for me to find that relationship with Dad because I grew up with Dad and Dad. So I didn't have a picture of a dad. I had no snapshot that said, this is what a dad looks like. So when people said to me, God, your father would go, really? When did we go fishing last? You know, I still can't fish. My wife can. The fish swim past me. Right? And if they had a five fingers, they'd show me the middle one. And they'd jump on her line. They did it one day, Jake, as well, nine times in a row. Confess your sin. Admit, believe, confess. Father, I am a sinner. Father, I do not live the way you want me to because at the, up until the day I've chosen not to or I've been grown up this way and this is how I grew up. How many times have we heard that? Well, I was raised that way. I grew up that way. Guess what? He can change it and he does. If you want any help with this, you'll find a room of people here from all walks of life and believe me, every single one of them, and um, as Pastor Zenberg said, you want prayer, let us know. There's a dozen different ways you can get hold of us. And we do and will. We sit here on Wednesday night and we, and we have dinner. And then we sit and talk and then we sit and look at who's called in and who wants prayer. And if your name's Fred and you're from Afghanistan, we will pray for you, Fred, from Afghanistan. And whatever it is you're asking for. And if you want a response back, um, give us an email. And we'll send you what we're praying to you. And if, if, if someone around the table, if the, the eldership, we get a word for you, we'll send it back to you. Let's let's get together. Let's join in and be that sure war together. Thank you for listening. I know it's a little bit higgledy piggledy, but there was a few things that I started and then Abba gave me different things. So I've got to go with what the Father said. So, Father, we just thank you for this morning. We praise your name and we worship you. We thank you that we can come into your royal presence in Yeshua's name. Amen. Thank you all. See you next week. Bless you.